Hello once again and welcome to another session of O-Level English. Today's lesson will be on giving instructions. What are instructions? Instructions are detailed information about how something should be done or operated. Do you know how to give instructions in English? What sort of instructions can you give someone? How to make a cup of coffee? How to get your school from your home? How to make a call on your cell phone or listen to your voicemail? How to cook something? Sometimes we read written instructions too on a daily basis. It might be a manual on how to use a camera. It could be instructions found in a recipe. It could be instructions put up at school on how to wash your hands. Giving instructions happen on a daily basis. We constantly give instructions to people. There are two parts to giving instructions. We call them sequences and actions. When giving instructions, sequences help order your instructions. It is like the one, two, three, four of your actions. It presents what needs to be done in order from the beginning to the end. For this, you can use phrases like first, then, next, after that, and finally. Along with these sequences, you present the actions. Let's look at how we can use the phrases we just learned. I am going to take the example of giving instructions on how to boil an egg. First, fill a medium-sized saucepan with water and wait till the water boils. Then, take an egg and slowly lower it into the pan using a spoon. Next, wait patiently for five to six minutes till the egg is boiled. After that, Take the egg out with care and put it into a bowl of cold water. Finally, peel off the shell and serve it in any way you wish. Let's highlight the sequences in blue and the actions in green so that you have a solid idea of the format. We also use the imperative form to give orders, directions or instructions in English. Let's look at some phrases that are written in the imperative. Eat your vegetables. Turn left and go straight on. To make the imperative, use the infinitive of the verb without to. For example, the infinitive of the verb come is to come. So when we transform it into the imperative, we remove the to and simply use come. Here are some examples of verbs in the imperative. Come here. Sit down. To make a negative imperative, put do not or don't before the verb. Don't is more informal than do not. Don't go. Do not walk on the grass. You often see the imperative form in instruction manuals or when someone tells you how to do something. There are often sequencing words to show the steps in the process. When you give instructions, you can help the other person with extra information and advice. Remember, turn off the electricity before touching any cable. Be careful not to touch any live wires. Try to see if the light bulb is broken or just loose. Try not to touch the light bulb with your hands you need to check the wattage of the light bulb first. It's important to make sure the electricity is off. It helps to wait for the light bulb to cool down before you remove it. Be sure to turn off the electricity before you touch the light bulb. Always wear gloves when you touch a light bulb. Never touch a socket with wet hands. Now turn to page 87 in your pupil's book, Unit 7, Activity 15. You would notice that there are quite a few actions and they all revolve around cooking. Before writing out instructions, let's first figure out the different actions or verbs. 
there is a list of words on page 86 that you can use to figure out what these pictures are. Let's look at picture number one. A kettle is on the stove, so we can use the verb boil. The water is clearly boiling. Look at the steam coming out. Picture two shows someone sifting some flour. So the verb that you can use here is sift. Picture number three shows a pan on the stove and someone stirring the food inside the pan. So the verb for this picture should be stir. The fourth picture is of another pan on the stove. The pan is closed with a lid and you can see some steam coming out of the lid from the sides. The verb you can use to describe this action is simmer. The fifth picture shows a grinding stone. So the verb that can be used to describe this action is grind. The sixth picture shows someone adding some flavor, most probably salt, into the pan of food. The verb used here is add, as flavor is added. The seventh picture shows a coconut being scraped. So the verb is scrape. In picture number eight, we see someone preparing something using flour. This action where you mix flour with water, etc. is known as kneading. You knead the flour. Picture nine is of someone cutting up a carrot. But you would notice that the carrot is being diced. Picture 10 shows a pan with some sizzling oil. The action that is described here is fry. The 11th picture may be a little unclear, but it is of water being drained. So the verb that should be used here is drain. Picture 12 shows probably some sauce being mixed into some food that is already being fried in the pan. This action is called mix. The food is being mixed in the pan. Picture 13 shows someone cutting up onions. The verb that should be used to describe this action is chop. The 14th picture shows a mortar and a pestle. The action used to describe this is pound. In picture 15, a mango is being peeled. The verb is peel. The 16th picture shows an electric mixer being used to beat eggs maybe. Uh, the verb that should be used to describe this action is beat. In the 17th picture, a lime is being squeezed. The verb used here is squeeze. Picture 18 shows the action scrape. We use a knife to scrape off matter. Picture 19 is of someone cutting up a potato. But you would notice that the potato is being sliced. You usually cut bread into slices too. That's why we refer to it as a slice of bread. Look at picture 20. The verb that you can use to describe this action is mix. We have already used it before, but we can use it for this as well. Now let's read the dialogue that follows on page 88 in your pupil's book. It's a telephone conversation between Kavindu and his mother. Let's read it together. Mother calls home. Hello, son. Hello, mother. How's grandfather? He's all right now, but we'll get late to come. Oh, I see. I was worried about you and your sister. We are fine. My friends are here. We've been cooking. Oh, son, that's great. We've already cooked rice and made a coconut sambo. You can make a dal curry too. Can you quickly give us the instructions? I'll put the phone on the speaker. That's good. Tell us, mother. All right, here we go. First, scrape the coconut, then... The conversation ends abruptly in your book, but we can complete it using the sequences and the actions we learned earlier on. Also remember that we have to write everything down in the imperative. Let's do it together. First, scrape the coconut. Take six small Bombay onions, peel them and dice them. Put them into a small bowl. Next, take a mortar and a pestle and grind some dried chilies with half a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of sugar. Then, you can mix it in one tablespoon of Maldive fish and grind a little more. 
After that, add the freshly scraped coconut. You can mix in the chopped onions and grind everything a little more. This will make the coconut absorb the flavour and colour of the chilli paste. Finally, add the chopped red onions and mix well. You would realise that the instructions have been given using the sequences that were discussed earlier on. Also note how we use the imperative tone. And we have also used some of the verbs you were introduced to earlier on in this lesson. In this same manner, we can give instructions on anything using a similar format. Well, that comes to the end of our lesson on giving instructions. If you found this useful, please subscribe to our channel. Have a super day.